Hello everybody and welcome to Super Mario Land. There are many, 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 many Mario games out in the world today. But out of all of them, the ones I hear get talked about the least are the Super Mario Land games for the Game Boy. I never really hear these games get talked about that much. And it's not because they're bad games. I think it's just because they're not as well known as they used to be. I mean, most Mario when you think of Mario, you probably think of like Super Mario World, uh, Super Mario 64, or Super Mario Galaxy, for example. Those are very well known and still quite liked to this day. And they're still played a lot often too. But I never really hear the Mario Land games get talked about. And they're pretty good games. In fact, they introduce a lot of unique ideas that haven't really appeared in Mario games since. Especially this one. Mario Land 2 follows the more standard Mario format, but it still throws in a few unique ideas. But yeah, I never really hear these games that talked about much, and I think they're pretty underrated. So I figured, why don't I play the first two Mario Land games on my channel? Just to show them off and give a better appreciation of them. Now, being an early Game Boy title, the first Mario Land game is very short. And it is incredibly short. In fact, it's only 12 levels long. There's four worlds, and each of them only has three levels. And none of the levels are really long. They're all pretty darn short. So I should get through this game pretty fast. It's, it's probably just gonna... I'm probably gonna split it up in just, like, two videos, which will both be relatively short but that's why i decided to do mario land 2 also that way it can kind of extend it a little bit and i'll get to show off both games for the at once because if i just did a playthrough on this game it's just going to be two very short videos mario land 2 is definitely a good bit longer but it's not terribly long in fact it's still a pretty short game also why am i still talking through this intro let's go ahead and get started All right, World 1 is called the Birabuto Kingdom. Now this game does not take place in the Mushroom, King in the Mushroom Kingdom like, like most other Mario games. It, ta it takes place in Sarasa Land, I believe that's how it's said. I could be entirely wrong, but it is not the Mushroom Kingdom. Not one bit. In fact, these enemies are not, are not Goombas. They look like Goombas and behave like them, but they are called something completely else. Completely different. I will... I don't remember what they're called. I'll put the name up on screen because I don't remember what it is. Okay. This flower I just picked up. You might think it's just your average Super Mario Fire Flower. And it works very similarly, but it's not a Fire Flower. This is called a Super Flower. And these are not Fireballs, these are Super Balls. You can notice the immediate difference. These things do not behave the same as fireballs. Well, kinda. They do still kill most of your enemies in like one or two shots. But they will bounce off of every surface they come in contact with. Like that. So yeah, they ricochet a lot. And that's really it. There's really not much different. That's really the only power-up in this game besides the mushroom. Uh, oh crap. That guy needed two shots, and I hit him once, and then he touched me. Uh, okay, oh yeah, there are stars in this game, too. I forget. What? Ah. Oh, I guess the hitbox on the enemy's bigger than I thought. Well, first death, and only in the first level. That's, that's not a good sign, because this game is not hard at all. In fact, it's very easy. This game is very different from most 2D Mario games. And the reason for that is because it was not developed by the it was not developed by uh, Miyamoto, the main creator of Mario and well, the creator of Mario entirely. In fact, he was not involved with the development of this game at all. In fact, uh, an entirely different team made this game and Mario Land 2 for that matter, which is why they're so different. 
I mean, as far as gameplay goes, this is basically the same as, like, Mario Bros. 1, but, yeah, as far as being in a different world and different enemies and new power-ups, that's why. Different team development. Okay, so you saw there at the, uh, the exit of the level, you have two little gates. If you take the bottom one, you'll just exit the level. If you take the top one, though, you'll go to this bonus game room, where a Mario and a ladder will be randomly shuffling between different layers, and you just press the you just press A whenever you want to stop, and whatever it lands and whatever Mario's whatever layer of Mario's on is the one he'll walk, and if he passes by the ladder, he will climb up or down depending on if it's above or below him. I hate these stupid B enemies that drop like spears on above you because they're they're pretty annoying. Okay, these guys. These are not regular Koopas. You cannot kick their shells around because they explode. These are bombshell Koopas. Another interesting enemy. A very unique, a very unique form of Koopa, really. Okay. All right. If you do play this game, I I should mention. If you decide, if you need to like go off like, a ledge or something, make sure you jump before you do so. Yeah, anytime you fall off a, you need to go off a ledge like that, make sure you jump before you do so, because the fall physics are pretty weird in this game. If you jump in, if you jump off a ledge like that, I mean, you got the standard, like, kind of floaty Mario fall. You know, typical of many 2D Mario side-scrollers. But if you decide to just walk off the edge, you drop like a freaking rock. I don't know why. See, look, jumping, normal Mario fall. Walk off, just immediate fall like that. Like, the gravity just increases like, a, like, like three times or something, I don't know. It's really weird, and it has caused me to die a few times before. I don't know why, it's super weird. I don't think that's a problem in the second game, but honestly, I don't remember. It's been a little while since I've played either one of these. What am I gonna get? I got the one life. Yeah, this is your basic, just 2D Mario Fair. Run, run in one direction, jump, hit enemies with fire... I mean, super balls, not fireballs. And just progress from one level to the next. And more new enemies. These are not piranha plants. They're called something else. I'm I'm not gonna try to remember all the names of these enemies, but these are these are this game's version of piranha plants. Ooh, I almost got hit by that guy. And man, just look at the environments in this game. I mean, you got this like ancient Egyptian-looking hieroglyph stuff, and I got killed by a fire-breathing sphinx. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, I think, uh, I think each different kingdom is themed off of something else. Aw, oh, come on. I should not be dying this early? That's really not a good sign. I really should not be dying this early. Oh my god, what is wrong? What is wrong with me? Oh my god. Please, do not die on the first world. This game is not hard. It's pretty easy, really. Okay. As I was saying, e I think each world is based off of something, is, is based off of like some real world kingdom. World 1, the Birabuto Kingdom is based off of, well, it appears to be Egypt. I mean, we had pyramids and now we got freaking sphinx sphinxes. Uh, I know... I think, I know that World 4 is based off of China. I can't remember what Worlds 2 and 3 are based off of. When we get there, I will, I will explain on the top of the screen with future me. Uh, go away. I think I can jump on this, guys. I can't remember. Can I jump on you? Yeah, I can. I'm Mario. I can jump on anything. Alright, first boss fight. Done. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Basically the same as fighting Bowser in the classic 2D Mario games. Just hit the switch at the end and you win.
Thank you, Mario. Oh, Daisy. Oh, it was not Daisy. Well, crap. Yeah, that is not Princess Peach. That is Princess Daisy. This was her first appearance in the Mario universe. Alright, welcome to World 2. We got a flying saucer here. Alright, World 2 is... I believe it's uh, ocean themed. Like we're on a beach or something. This is like cliffside next to an ocean. Okay. Go away, you freaking fish. But yeah, that was not Princess Peach. That was Princess Daisy. This was her first appearance in any game. In the Mario universe. Now, most people know her today from the, uh, the spin-off games. Like Mario Party and Mario Kart. But yeah, she this was her first mainline appearance. And I believe this is her only, like, main series Mario game appearance. After this, I think she's only in the spin-offs? I think so. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't remember any other mainline series game that she's actually in. So yeah, it just brings up the question, like, Why is Mario saving Daisy when saving Peach is his thing? Mario, are you doing some questionable acts? Of course he is. I mean, he goes around like killing turtles normally in his in his other appearances, so that's certainly questionable. Yeah, it's so weird that it's Daisy, and I don't know why they decided to go with uh, someone else entirely instead of Peach. But again, different development team, so I guess they wanted to be. I guess they wanted the damsel in distress to be different too. Uh, okay. Already ended the stage. Again, like I said, this game is very short. It is incredibly short. But it's fun. It's really fun. The fact that it's so short, and that it was for a portable console, this was the, like, prime example of a play-on-the-go type of game. Because you could just grab this game and pick it up whenever you wanted to go whenever you wanted to play it like this is like perfect for car rides ah crap give me that I need that oh I don't get the super flower dang yeah this is back when uh Mario games were oh crap yeah like the earliest Mario games if you got like a uh... If you got, like, to the Fire Flower stage, but then got hit, you would shrink all the way back down to your base form. Whereas nowadays, if you get hit with a Fire Flower form, you are... You have a weird head, dude. Oh god, oh god. Ooh, okay. I, I had enough invincibility frames left. But yeah, this is back when Mario games, if you got hit with, like, the, when you were in Fire Flower, you went back to base form. And if you were in base form and picked up a fire flower, you wouldn't get the fire stage. You would just go back to your super stage. Yeah. It was it was a harder time, I'm sure. Of course, with the modern Mario games, if you pick up a fire flower in your base form, you just immediately get to your fire form. Oh crap, I should not have jumped. I'm glad that missed. Okay. I'm suddenly being very cautious because I've already been dying a lot more than I should have. And I'm already at the end of the stage. And give me that. Alright. Uh, I could go for the super flower. Ah, uh, well, okay, three lives is good too. I'll always take the extra lives. With the red, I've been dying. I kind of need them. Okay, here we go. Now, this is pretty cool. Mario Land introduced a lot of unique ideas that don't really appear in Mario games today. I mean, look, when's the last time you can think of a 2D Mario game that had a, that had a submarine battle? I mean, look at this. This is cool. I don't think we've actually seen this return in any... 2D Mario game since. This is really cool. I don't know why this hasn't returned. I like this. 
I like shooters like this. I mean, this kind of reminds me of, like, Galga and stuff. And I freaking love those games. So playing a, playing a stage like this is really fun. At least to me it is. Through the box. But yeah, this is just one of the unique one of the unique ideas that this game introduced that makes it pretty separate from, you know, your typical 2D Mario game that you see today. This is back when 2D Mario games were like very unique. I think these coins spell out Mario. Yes, they do. That's nice. But this is back when 2D Mario games each were like very unique in their own way. Whereas today, now you have the new Super Mario Bros. games, and while they're fun, they're all basically the same. And here we have our second boss fight, it's a giant seahorse. There's two ways you can beat this guy. One, you can just shoot him over and over again like that. Or two, if you're really good, you can sneak under him, shoot out these blocks, and hit the switch. That will also instantly kill him if you're able to do that. But since I was small, I didn't want to take the risk of getting hurt by him. But yeah, the 2D Mario games today are... I mean, the new Super Mario Bros. games aren't bad. I think they're fun and enjoyable. It's just that they all play basically the same. I mean, before those, the 2D Mario games were all very unique. I mean, Mario World was very different from Mario 3. Mario 3 was very different from Mario 1. So on. Alright, that's enough for now. I've made it through the first two worlds. And yeah, you can already tell, this is not going to take long at all. There's only two more worlds, this one in World 4. So in the next episode, we'll just go ahead and finish this game up. Alright. Thank you for joining me. I hope the... Hope this shows off the this uh this very good game. It's a very underrated game. Both of them are, and I hope I get to I hope you'll get to appreciate them a little bit more after seeing them. Alright. Until then, I will see you all in the next episode. Goodbye.